in this episode. My favorite is the vanilla. Vanilla moon pie. I like now, regular moon pie. And chocolate. Well, they you got know. banana flavor too. The, now that's yeah, the yellow. banana is a is a big deal, you know. It used yeah. to go Johnny back store when I was I eat I love leftovers. I mean I eat I mean he'd soup. come down to the house say if you got anything different to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, soup beans are better the second or third day than they are the first day. No, nothing exotic, John. Don't panic. This ain't, this ain't <laughs> no. like what we've been eating. No, that, I think this is just the, the, pretty good. This is more. Yeah, that actually it. looks like something I could eat. This, yeah. looks, this is more towards the taking what's left. Welcome, everybody, to the Appalachian Connection Podcast. This is your producer, Big John Howard, and we got yeah. your host, Big Tony Allen, and we got our co-host, Cousin Wolf Montgomery. We're here, boys. <laughs> Crazy, we're back live, finally, after a week off. Of my, we, we needed yeah. a... I can't see you, Tony. Yeah, I I you. Reboot. <laughs> reboot. yeah we needed a reboot. Reboot. Rebooted. Reboot. I need factory reset or something. Yeah. <clears throat> Glad to be back for oh. a while tonight, though. Yeah. Yeah, right now we got the the boys' basketball game going on, so we're going to try to get to that as quick as we can. But uh, I just heard it was uh, thirty-eight to uh, thirty-eight uh, twenty-nine. Yeah, we're down. Down to twenty-six. Thirty-nine oh. to twenty-six. So yeah, our local Hornets I think are. We got twenty-nine. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> our local Hornets are uh, <clears throat> live right now at the regionals. They're going down. And they're in. Uh, Speaking of that, we got a giveaway tonight. We got a uh, custom uh, head collar, oh, yeah. uh, made logo Hornet sweatshirt in size two X, brand new, and we're going to give it away tonight. You can't get that logo anywhere. It yeah, is a special what you logo. All think about that logo. I think it's perfect. You know, if you guys like the logo, then we'll talk. Can you but post it up on the screen? I it, it it's actually rotating in our. Uh, Okay. And our sponsor stream now. We got a lot of good stuff to go over tonight. I think we're going to start out with pay pond fishing. Pay pond fishing. Well, now, you know, I, I I was going the other day. You know, everybody know I went up to Michigan to grab a pup off my first cousin uh, Tommy Porter and his wife Cindy. Wonderful people. They treat us awesome as always. But <coughs> get a beagle pup, and I passed a little pay pond. Made me think of it, and we sure spent some time at the pay pond. Oh fishing. yeah, I tell you what, I like to shout out to our main man Jesus Christ. You know, I always like to do that. Absolutely. Thank him for everything he does. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, be here without him. The pay pond, I've, I tell you what, it's uh, I started fishing in pay ponds when I was ten years old. Catfish, that's all I know about fishing. Any other fish, I wouldn't know one lure from another. <laughs> but I found out. With the catfish, and it's all in the presentation. <laughs> well, the smell helps, too. Oh, yeah. Smell Gotta helps. have that. Uh, yeah, the, the catfish do stink. <laughs> I'm on, I remember one time I tried to teach my good, great old friend, Kenny Fletcher, how to catch a catfish, and I don't know, he got embarrassed or something. Now, he just sat back there and watched me, you know. <laughs> he never got a bite. Now, my old buddy Kenny, how you on? I see you on there, buddy. I'm just hollering at you. I'm pranking with you now. Them catfish, you get them all in the pay pond. Of course, they come and they stock them, you know. They come and then they stock them, and then you sit there and fish for them. You pay to get in and catch them. They're awful good eating. I mean, they're wonderful eating, wonderful eating fish. And uh, you get them to stock them, and, and uh, they stock them while you're sitting there, you know, and you're waiting on the fish truck to get there. And one of the running jokes that somebody around the pond, hog, there the fish truck ain't. There it ain't. <laughs> They always call me a pond hog, but that's that's not really well, what I am. Pretty bad, though. I've given more fish away. Than most people's caught at these pay ponds. <laughs> Amanda wanted to go one time, and we'd run into Don down there, and she wasn't hushing. <laughs> Bless her heart. 
they started biting down there where she is at. She loves the fish, you know, and we was down there. And she, 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 son, she was a tangling. I would worked on poles. You remember this? And I was nonstop. Finally, I got down there and got to catching them. Well, here she come, first cast, throw it over mine, cross me, you know, and I spent 20 minutes in the fishing bag. She looks over at me dead serious. She said, you want me to go on around the pond? I said, Lord, I wish you would. Well, here she went like a bull, you know. Don said, probably ought not have said that. I said, well, she asked me. I was heard her trip. feeling. <laughs> heard her feeling. You know, he'd want to be a pond hog. But my girls, uh, Courtney and Aaron, I, they started going with me when they were real little, six, seven years old. And they were so lucky. And you can ask these guys I used to fish with, the fish, when they'd stock it, they'd come right under their feet. Every time, oh yeah, if I ever took them, uh, yeah. didn't they, Tony? Oh, they love. Now all they get so jealous, they'd throw on us, and that, them girls had the biggest time. They had that's some of my greatest memories, and we had a good time doing that. Caught a lot of fish. Always had a, a kind of tradition. We always had us uh, made me lose a moon pie <laughs> and an RC cola. Oh, no, RC, RC Cola. Cola. All the fish weren't bad. Can't beat it. Mom I'll tell you what, RC Cola is bad. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like RC Cola? No. I like RC it's, Cola. It's bad. So, Don, you prefer the yellow moon pie or a chocolate? Uh, My favorite is the vanilla. Vanilla moon pie. I like now, regular moon pie. And chocolate. Well, they you got know. banana flavor, too. But, now, that's Yeah, the yellow. banana is a, is a big deal, you know. I used yeah. to go to Johnny back store when I was, you know, a real young boy, right down there on my bicycle and I think the only flavor they had was chocolate, and it's hot in that store. And I had chocolate all over me. You know, <laughs> by the time I got done with, it, I loved them though. Oh Lord! So we've had some time at the pay pond, that's for sure. I, we've caught as much as 30, 40, you know, farm raised catfish a day. Then take them home and clean them. Oh yeah, hard to beat. Yeah, hard to beat. Yeah, they're you good. ever done any John? I've not done a lot of pay pond fishing. I know you've done a lot of fishing. But I love fishing, but I've not done a lot of pay pond fishing. Yeah. These fella, I'm, I'm not much in the catfish, though. I ain't going to tell you who it was, but these high-tech fishermen, they went out, they, <laughs> they talked me into going out with them one day bass fishing on this boat. Well, son, listen, they was a cast, and they had swap lures. And they had oh, cast, yeah, that's they what you play. do. And they had swap. I mean, listen, I cast them for about 10 minutes. My arm was a hurting. I said, All I day. ain't doing this. I said, All this day. silly. Well, what are you going to do? I said, let me show you. So I took, I had a little piece of red worm, and I took a little hook, put it down there, and I caught me a little minnow right out of the pot, uh, you know, out of the lake. And yeah. I took me a bobber, and I put him down about a foot, and I throwed him out there, and I sat back about half asleep. All of a sudden, that bobber started dancing, mm -hmm. you know, and kafoosh, largemouth bass. I think he's a five, five and a half, five and a half. Oh, he's a dandy. Pounder. Yeah, he's a good Well, I never could understand these guys with the boats. Uh, I've went a couple of times. They throw it toward the bank, and then the people on the bank, they're throwing out toward the boat. <laughs> I never did understand that, but whatever it takes. You Amanda know. says, don't let these guys teach you how to clean fish, because then when you know how, you get stuck cleaning the fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good, good on that, you know. I mean, I guess we can say it on here. So we, we're cleaning fish one day, and she said, I want to learn how to clean them fish. Well, I don't know how you do it, you know, but I learned from my old pal Wolf. And some of the old timers. So now the old way to clean a catfish would have been to nail it up on a barn, cut around it, peel yeah. the hide down with a pair of channel locks. That was the old way. No, no, it'd be a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, the old way to do it was uh, uh, try to skin them. Yeah. Yeah, try to skin them. Well, nowadays you fillet them. You know. Yeah, you electric knife. Good. Electric knife. You know, that's the only way to go. But anyway. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Boy. <laughs> Go ahead. It Skinning should be, catfish. It should be good Amanda now. was Go ahead. Trying, wanting to tell you. She wasn't learning how to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I, you got to lay them up on the cutting board, you know, and, and take a hammer, you know, and knock them in the head. Knock them in the head. Okay. The yeah. fish? But, yeah. Yes. And then they'll stiffen out, you know. When okay. You them in the head with that hammer, they'll stay to flopping all over the place. Well, I, I hit that first one with a hammer, and I looked over, and she's going, oh, oh, oh. I said, you all right? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. She never did get the hang of that part of it, though. She didn't want to yeah. bust them in the head, you know. So what's better, a moon pie or an oatmeal cream pie? Well, I prefer a moon pie. I don't like the oatmeal. You don't like the oatmeal pie? I'll tell you two reasons I don't. I just don't like them. The taste of them, and they gave me heartburn, heartburn. really bad. I always oatmeal? had heartburn, yeah. But a moon pie now, just, you know, and I, I never buy them. <laughs> I don't know why. It's kind of like... It's something I don't eat at home. Yeah. But if I go somewhere, I want one. It's kind of like you ever go to a funeral home and you never eat like ham, cheese, salad, and 
and uh, chicken salad and pimento cheese sandwiches. But oh, let me go to a, let yeah. me go to a funeral home, buddy. I'll work with them. <laughs> and I've thought about that. You know, I don't understand cheese. that. I don't. No, listen, you don't, I don't eat don't. food at a funeral home. That's automatic food poisoning. Well, I'm just telling you. Set out like pimento cheese yeah. or egg salad or bologna salad, anything with milk in it. You automatic don't. And when you oh dinner on the ground, don't <laughs> touch the milk product made food. You automatic food poisoning. I'm telling you, I've been there and done that. Well, I got a story about an oatmeal pie anyway. All right, good. So, <laughs> this one day I was at uh, a save a lot there in Winchester. And I love oatmeal pies. You know, I've always liked them. I don't know why. They're just good. All right, so I get the big ones. You know, I don't get the little bitty one. I get the big one. Yeah. And I was standing in line checking out. And all, this old guy in front of me, I could tell you, he was a lot older than me. And, you know, I could tell he knew about food a little bit. And he looked behind me. He goes, So, what are you going to do with the uh, oatmeal pie? I said, Well, I plan to eat it. <laughs> he goes, Now, listen to him. I know it's going to sound crazy. I said, What is it? He said, Get you some peanut butter. And put it on top of it and get another one put it together. Make a sandwich. Make a sandwich out of it. I said peanut butter and an oatmeal pie. Well, might be good. Yeah. And I, I, said, tried it. I said, I've never heard of this in my entire life. He said, don't knock it until you try it. Did you do it? Well, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever ate. Really? You still do it? Well. It's probably that thick by then. Wasn't it's it? still it's good, it? yeah. Oatmeal pie. It, it, I, I don't know how sandwich. it tastes, uh, but I had one of my buddies try it. And he said, that's good, John. I said, son, I had to try it. I knew this guy knew what he was talking about. Well, on a food-related topic, since John brought up food, we were, uh, we were talking about how the people around here, especially the days gone by, were so resourceful, and they used everything that they had. So tonight, we are going to have bean cakes from leftover bean cakes. soup beans and tater cakes from leftover mashed taters. You ever had them? I can't say I have, Tom. Yeah. Well, well, everybody... You know, uh, maybe I have probably when I was younger, but not people in Appalachia. You know, most of us raised hard, and we didn't just throw out stuff. You know, we leftovers for two or three days. You know, and you learn to make different things out of them, and and uh, still do. Like, I mean, I don't cook as much as I used to, but you could open my refrigerator, and they probably be four or five uh, butter containers in there, or, or Cool Whip containers. Mm -hmm. and, might be one that have butter in it, you know, yeah. and oh, yeah. start calling somebody and say, I've got this leftover stuff. It's been here a week. You reckon I can eat it? <laughs> well, good thing. My daughter, the other day, my young, and at school had to, uh, in her civics class, I guess, had to invent a product for the shark tanks. You've seen the shark tanks on TV, you know, where they assess your product and all this yeah. stuff. Well, she had to invent a product. Well, she'd come up with this Tupperware container that had a date clicker in it and a freshness tester and so when you put leftovers in the fridge don like what you were talking about this 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 tupperware container she had dated the, dated the product and and kept the freshness of it i thought it was the best thing in the world i thought it was awesome. yeah, that is cool did, yeah she but came my, up with that my young and did I my sister awesome. jewel she's the world's worst i mean uh, she always has been <laughs> uh, if, if if they had chili or uh Hot roast or whatever, Tanker had it for a week. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you just ate well, it for a week. Well. You know, waste not want not, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, eat, I love leftovers. I mean, I, I eat mean, he'd soup. come down to the house say, if you've got anything different to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, soup beans are better the second or third day than they are the first day. They thicken right up, man, they're good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like yeah. a thick, well, soupy soup bean. I don't like a watery soup all bean. All that stems from really just poor people, you know, that yeah. didn't, you know, Raised hard and had to make do and had a lot of kids to feed and yeah, you didn't, you you didn't just throw nothing away. I mean, it just guys comment out there if you know what creasy greens are. Also, I, like and share this right now. Share it out to your friends, family. We got all kinds of new sponsors. Yeah, we got a lot way. going on here. So, Don, you want to go over the sponsors? We'll go right over here? the sponsors real quick. Got Track That Doors, our local hunters and local web show here in Sarasville, Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Got Granny Made Cheesecake. Sold here at the famous farmhouse diner. We got Creekside Stitching and more, local feed fishing and more store. You also have uh, my website, techholler.com, for your local IT business needs. And we got one of our new sponsors is uh, Jessica D. Williams Photography. Amazing and beautiful photography here in Sirensville, Kentucky. Yeah, give her you a shout if you need it. Oh, oh, absolutely. Look her up on Facebook. And she'll even do your makeup and then take your picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if she will. Maybe give you now, a perm and then take your picture. Now you can find all these on www.appalachiaconnection.com. Uh, we also have the Appalachia TCG group and the 
Farmhouse Diner, and our last one, Parkway Peddler's Mall, Crash Primitive Farmhouse Furniture, Jewelry, Elect- Electronics, Gifts, and Refreshments. I've They've got, got everything down there. <laughs> I've got to go down there. I've Listen, Don, you there. just go through there, son. You go room to room, and you pop into this room. You might see craftsman tools, and you pop in the next room. might be women's clothing. Oh, yeah. They've got everything. They've got trading cards you know, in there, uh, basketball, uh, comics. Sippy, not sippy cups. Uh, sippy cups. <laughs> What do you call them? They probably have sippy cups down there. You know what I'm talking about. What do you call them? Uh, The containers. Yeah, the cup like you carry around. Yeah. Tumblers. 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 Sippy cups. I don't know where. Or sippy cups. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We need some farmhouse sippy cups. Yeah, I don't know. I need a sippy cup. I get more. I'm in a new new farmhouse shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, guys, we got all kinds of new merch in. Beautiful shirt. New green in here. We're actually giving away that uh, 2X Hornet. Hoodie, and we got all yeah. kinds of banjos and beyond sweatshirts, hats, 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 shirts anything. down here. You can see it all on the farmhouse webpage. I think they got it all yep. listed on there, don't they? We yeah. really appreciate it. We'll put it on the website in. soon, too, but it's on the farmhouse Facebook page. It's awesome. We're doing, we're rolling. We're back. Yeah, we're back. Like we took a week out. All you can. We. Listen, I thought we was going to get run out of town for taking a week off. People's mad at us, son. <laughs> mad at us. But we got our music tomorrow night. Music. So be sure to tune in for hey, that. And 10%. Tomorrow oh, yeah. night. Oh, yeah. Let me see here. So, oh, yeah. I, I got to do that. Now, this is a big thing, guys. This is more on a serious note. Uh, ain't got my glasses. I left them in Michigan. Uh, I did. I lost, did you really? I lost them in the woods. And I, I'd give them to Clara. Yeah, let me borrow them. Don. I'd give them to Clara. And, and I thought she's supposed to put them up. I got aggravated at her and ended up I lost them myself. That's the story of my life. But anyway. <laughs> We got a fundraiser going on here at the farmhouse diner tomorrow for Alex Wales. Alex is a young lady that's a paramedic, and her and the folks that work with they come in here. They're regular, uh, regular patrons. What's a patron? Patrons. Patron. patron. Regular yeah. patrons of ours. Uh, she's a twenty-three-year-old uh, uh, yeah. lifeguard EMT, and she was injured in an ambulance crash. And tragic. She's yes, got a did. two-year-old daughter, and ten percent of all sales. Uh, tomorrow at the farmhouse diner going to be donated directly to her and her family and we're going to also have a, a donation jar set up she's a wonderful young lady and a hometown girl and of course she needs our prayers you know our lord and mm-hmm. savior can do more than anybody but we're going to do what we can to help her too she's got a long road to recovery so uh it's a very serious injury and we want to help her out so 10 percent of everything we do tomorrow We'll go to her family, and then we'll have a jar uh, donation. We're keeping the kitchen open the whole while we're playing music, too. Oh, yeah. The kitchen will be open all night. Okay. Yeah. So you guys know, come on down, listen to music, get get about to eat, and then support her. Sorry, babe. I, I, Patron, I don't know. Man, don't get me over that. <laughs> you all right. That's a wet spill, like that stuff I sprayed on me earlier. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, guys, this is a serious and a good cause. Let's help this young lady out. One of the reasons we do this is to, to help people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially our local people. Our local you know, people, you know. And people. when we say local, of course, we're, we're all McGough. Well, we all Middle Fork boys, but. McGough and Nights. McGough and Nights, and, and, and we want to help <laughs> yeah. all of Eastern Kentucky when we can. Yeah, absolutely. I've got another thing going on here. Uh, up at uh, Creekside Stitch and More, one of our uh, sponsors, they're going to have an equine clinic on March the 30th, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. They're going to have a fire on site, look like a veterinarian on site, Dr. Dahlia Smith. Dash Har. They're going to do vaccines, rabies shots for cats and dogs, teeth floating, uh, pregnancy checks, castrations, woo, woo. <laughs> cog and health certifications. But that. anyway, uh, visit them and check them out. And uh, oh, like I said, shit. they're wonderful folks over there, and they've been awful good to us here at the podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We appreciate them more the than that. Farmhouse Diner has always been people here, Tony and, and Amanda, that have helped everybody. When the oh, flood came, they always. fed. Hundreds and hundreds of people. You know, you, you got to give back. And, if you don't give uh, back, there ain't much to you. What want to do in the community, sure. you know, ain't, anybody needs anything out there, I hope I ain't overstepping here, Tony, but mm-hmm. I'm sure no, you No, we agree. have anybody we can. You know, if, if, if you've got some problems, now don't call and ask for a load of gravel. You know, if you've got <laughs> problems or questions <laughs> about... We ain't got no gravel. We ain't got no gravel to give. All that, that you need help with, I'm... I'm be the first people here to help you if we can. We'll put you in can. touch with somebody to give you aid and support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if it ain't nothing more, we can't do no more than, than, than ask for prayers for you, you know. But they say if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. I think that's what the good book says. Yep. Another thing I was going to touch on, like there was Don, this morning we had a couple ladies in here from, uh, one of them was from Oklahoma and one of them was from Kansas. And 
they had their breakfast, you know, and they was bragging on the hospitality and all that, and they was leaving. I checked them out or whatever, and they said, well, we're going to get on the road bad as we dread. I said, well, if you have a flat tower, I said, call me, I'll come help you. And they stopped, you know, and they looked. Would yep. you really? I said, well, yeah. I said, I wouldn't leave two damsels in distress stranded on the side of the road. I said, you know, I'll come help you. But they thought that was awesome. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think that is Appalachian. And I people, would go it? help them. I would. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I've got a mobile tar changing kit in the back of my truck and my toolbox. I got jacks. I've changed enough tars you couldn't fit in this field. You just done try it out, ain't you? Well, you know, I like to get new tools, and then you want to try them out. Yeah, that's you crazy. came to me on the parkway last yeah. year. That's the dad in you. You got to change. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot! Well, let's move on to another topic, guys. We, you want have, have we touched on sports at all yet? We touched on a little bit of the Hornets right now. They're playing right now on D and D Sports. They're probably taking the majority. Oh, 40. So the Hornets have cut it back down close. Yeah. Then the Wildcats uh, played last night. Uh, the Kentucky Wildcats did play last night, and they rolled Vanderbilt, which Vanderbilt's terrible. So, well, they just, you know, they think they try they, to outscore everybody. They, <laughs> they do a pretty good job of it sometimes. <laughs> ain't much on but, defense. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, they ain't much the on. Kentucky's the type of team. They can either beat you by 100 or lose by a free throw. Yeah, that's yeah. it. They don't no. play no defense. They might as well just send the, they might as well just not play and just play horse or something. That's what they're beating them at. You never know who'll get a run in a tournament, you know. <laughs> at least we're making it to the second day in the SEC tournament. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> Let's talk about playing sports then versus now. What games did you play? Mumble Peg? I have no idea what that Mumble is. Mumble Peg's throwing a pocket knife. I've played it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought that was called Stretch. Same thing. Okay. Yeah, I have played go. Mumble Peg then. Yeah. You have, yep. <laughs> well, we had some games. I don't even... When I was at one room school... Is that a sport, though? We was on a hill. I, marbles. I played one baseball game in my life, and they come out in the ninth inning and woke me up in the outfield. <laughs> yeah. I took a nap in the sun. I always was bad. If the sun come on a warm day, you know, oh, yeah. that I'd lay back, you know, in the sun and get that warm sun, hit you and fall asleep. And they come in the ninth inning and woke me up and said, the game's over. Let's go. <laughs> They're still waking you up. That's my experience. Still waking you up. <laughs> I'm more of an action contact sport type person, you know. I've, I've played a lot. I made the team in high school basketball. I'll have to tell that story some other day, but uh, I made the team, then I quit. But there's a funny story behind that. We'll leave that for a other episodes. Now, Amanda, she's a big... Well, listen, when you're talking about... Of course, Amanda had an uncle by marriage that played for the Cleveland Indians. You know, he was a pitcher there for many Really? Years. Yeah, his name was uh, Eric Plunk. You can look him up. He pitched I've her. heard she'd of been Plunk, to, I think. Been to, uh, he was a closeout pitcher, but she'd been to many games, so she's a big baseball fan, especially from the 90s era, but I never was. I never did. I'm more yeah, of a man, contact I know me and Tony both played football tony went on to play a little bit of college yeah it, it, it's football is uh probably reason i'm in the shape i'm in you know so I've been <laughs> it hurt, up. hurt us up I, don what did you play did you play any sport growing up we didn't have a whole lot of room you know went to one room school and it was right on the hillside there weren't a blade of grass nowhere so you played king of the hill and fought uh, each other played a game <laughs> called uh it was called dare base i mean i Dirt don't base? even know how to tell you how to play i can't really remember but line up across from each other and Maybe somebody out there knows that game. I don't know. We played a lot of marbles in the dirt, you know, and inside when it rained, we'd get on the just soaked down Chris old floors, you know, probably reading we're all dead, you know, or dying, uh, get down and play marbles, you know, on that Chris old and stuff like that. Played just, you know, make up stuff. Play with sticks and well, it's like stretch whatever. there. You know what stretch is? You take a pocket knife and you line up together and you start pitching it to stick it in the ground. And wherever you stick it at, that other person's got to uh, stick their leg out there. And whoever gets out the farthest without following, being able to stick it wins. You know? Yeah, I was yeah, that was good, good at that. That was I fun. Long leg stretch. Unless out, you know? it's a staple around here to have a pocket knife. I don't ever leave home without a pocket knife. Yeah. I don't. Don, Love a good don't, pocket you, knife. You, John, you carry one? I carry one. I didn't carry one today, but I got two or three. I got two or three at work and two or three on my desk at home. Don't leave without my pocket knife. I, pocket I hate knife leaving. Andy, you can do so many things with a pocket knife. I might have one in my computer bag right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And my dad could take a pocket knife, and he, you know, he was a, a, a so electrician kind of in a way too. Yeah. Why he said he cut it better than them little. Well, he better at cutting the wire than them little trimmer things. He could work it with that pocket. Trimmers knife. are the worst thing in the world to cut. Clean the, your fingernails, clean your nose, trim your nose hairs, cut your mustache. You can do anything with a pocket. And knife. you don't yep. want a pocket knife, a carrying knife, to be too sharp. You don't want it really sharp. No way. Yeah. 
Not real short. I remember when they went around school one day looking for pocket knives. Well, that's kind of stupid. Yeah. They did. They went around high school. When I was in high school, and I rem- I'll never forget it, I'm, uh, my, our cousin Brandon Allen, he was scared to death. I had my pocket knife, too, but I had this little peanut pocket knife. Like It was like this big. I knew I'd get away with it, and then he had his pocket knife. It was like that big. Yeah. I just, uh, his and little boy, my neighbor, Brandon's little boy is my neighbor. He's five or six years old. I can't remember, but he, I gave him a pocket knife the other day. I had yeah. a pocket knife, and he, he loves, you know, he's the best little fellow there was. And I said, I don't take his school. I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they had to come around searching, and somehow I stuffed that pocket knife like in the corner of my thing, and I pulled out my pockets like this. Yeah. They didn't see it, and I put it back down there, and they didn't, they didn't teach me with two knives. <laughs> I got one better than that. I want to tell it. It made me think of it. We's up, I feel bad. Too- I, I guess you ain't supposed to carry them, but. This, we, this ain't no. been too long ago. We went up to a concert up at uh, Pikeville Expo Center, and uh, uh, I guess I can tell this. And they said, get rid of your pocket knife before they let me in there. And I said, that? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you can either walk it all the way back to your car or you can throw it in the garbage. I said, I ain't throwing it with the German eyeball. Really? I swear. I'm talking to you. I said, I ain't throwing it away. It's a German eyeball. Well, you, can, you, can, you can't come in with it. I said, well. I said, let me stick it well, in you and you hold it. <laughs> and he said, well, throw it in the garbage. I said, son, this is a $60, $70 pocket. That's a German eyeball. You don't throw a German eyeball away. Uh-uh. I ain't throwing it away. So he said, well, you have to do something. So I walked outside and I told mom, I said, bro, it. I said, broad, I said, they they never know the difference. We went right on the other concert. <laughs> John Sayers, uh, we played Red Rover, too. I just leaned over. My back's hurt. <laughs> well, we can move it. No, that's fine. It's good. I'll, 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 I'll take care of it. Guys, how is the sound out there? Comment on our sound. You, you probably played Red Rover, Wolf. Yeah, we did that, too, but this was a different game. It was fun, you know, the game I was talking about. But that's... Uh, not we good to go Cowboys. through an airport well, security then, with you know, a knife and backpack. Uh, <laughs> <Kurt McDaniel. laughs> there were so many uh, people, uh, me and my Kim people and everybody in Fort Middle Fork had so much Native American in us, we didn't play Cowboys and Indians. We played Cowboys and Germans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't want to offend nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Our cousins. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's true. Yeah, we're all mixed up around here. People asked the other day about our heritage, and our heritage is we a lot of Scotch Irish, a lot of Native. You know, I'm heavy Native American. Don is too. I got a dose of Native American from both sides. Come through the Sizemore clan, and then I came through the McDaniels. Where you know my my grandpa's mother was full blooded. You know, yeah. she was. <laughs> so I've got a lot of Native. Now, I don't too, show John. it. Lake I don't show it. Florida. You got it too, John. Yeah, you come through. Am it with I Montgomery. in it? Yeah, yeah Montgomery's got good bloodline. I think. Yeah, the herds ain't uh, got much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they've got it in there, too. Uh, how old are you guys, and do you still have a lot of questions about life? Well, I'm 41 years old. 37. Uh turned 41 in January. And, yeah, I've got a lot of questions about life. But now it's, it, it's and he asks questions. me all the time. Yeah, it's it's deeper than a well digger's hind end, the questions I got about life. So we just there's all, that. There's all kinds of questions. And there. he's a catastrophic thinker. Catastrophic so, thinker, try to figure you know. it all out, you know. And I, my wife says that some things ain't black and white, that they're shades of gray, but I think everything ought to be black and white. I don't think I give him the answers he wants. I'm kind of, you know, I'm laid back like a Cadillac seat. You know, most of the time I, I just let it roll, you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, Just babies. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, I've got one coming up I dread. I'll be 70 on April the 8th. Oh. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah. it's still something real. My mind's still like a child. You know? I got one for you, and I don't think we really can play it, is, it on yeah. here, Dom, but it reminds he, He's an old hippie, and he don't know what to do. Yeah. Should he grab on to the old? Should he hang on yeah, to the unbelievable. new? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I can't. Yeah. It just don't even seem real, you know. Yeah, but that's the way it rolls. Well, life don't stop. For I don't even seem like I'm almost forty. So life don't, don't life don't slow down yeah. for nobody. You know, I look around, and my youngins almost grown. Yeah, that's just amazing. Is, I got an eleven year old. It only really makes sense. You know, uh, yeah, won't be long. You know, more than likely, I'll be having grandkids. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. It is. I'm getting old. Yeah, I hammer, hammer down, Kenny. Hammer, hammer down, down buddy. You hammer keep down. It rolling, man. I don't You're normally can't. complain, but I, today my feet and legs and back have absolutely killed me. I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't know if my trip, the driving, you know, That's of course, my intellect that did. That's what it did. It hurt you a little bit. Yeah, we come back north of Columbus, and it's raining so hard that, that the truckers was pulling over. So I slowed <laughs> her down to about 35 and cruised on, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
I don't know what our camera's doing. It's trying to, it keeps defocusing. I don't know if it's picking something up off the mirror or what. Probably. It's got our light in the mirror. Spring <laughs> forward, do we like the change? Yeah, well, what's your thoughts? Do you like, do you like well, time I, change? I'm tarred regardless. I'm always tarred. <laughs> but we lose an area, right? Right. Yeah. yeah spring we, forward, we fall backward. Yeah. Well, I like that time better. I always said leave it. I like more daylight. Like this time, like right now? No, no. The spring forward time. So you like, uh, daylight okay. savings time? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I like I like uh, I like. Uh, I think they should leave it that way. I, I like more daylight time. So when you get home with the evening, of course we're here a lot. But when you get home with the evening, I can still light, my dogs. Yeah. I, now listen, I like the rabbit hunt. I just got a new pup, and 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 I've got to get him started and going and get him trained up right, get him ready for season. So are, I like to get home food with him. You know what are audience likes there? Curry them. See what uh, time they like the best. You fellas like. Uh, uh, daylight savings time, or you reckon they ought to do away with it? Two work. Daylight savings time is all the way. There all you the go. Way. That's what yeah, I said. All the way. I agree uh, with you that. You like springtime better got, or when it goes back? I like summer. There you summer, go. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. Summer. Yeah, right now it would yeah. probably still be light out. We've yeah. got summer summer hard. Guys back here. I think I like the longer days, too. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. Winter's a I even feel better, I think. Seems yeah. like I always feel worse whenever the spring or it goes well, yeah, well, it, like it is right I now. I mean, a chicken, uh, chicken, <laughs> the chicken, <laughs> a chicken, the chicken. They'll feather out in the spring. You know, they'll lose their feathers sometimes. Or mom say, yeah, they'll. They get somebody. a little broody in the spring too. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go there. You know, everything. We, well, that reminds me of the skunks. You know, they're on the prowl right now. Skunks is on the war path. Yeah, you got to watch them. I'll about hit two or three. <laughs> And you may not know this, but I've learned this throughout the year. Skunks are detrimental to the baby rabbit population. Oh, They'll yes, track down a baby rabbit nest in a briar thicket and eat every baby rabbit in it. They're all well, I hate skunks then. They sure are. Pepe Le Pew does that. Well, now you can't say Pepe Le Pew. Oh, yeah, canceled. he's canceled. He got canceled. He's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take <laughs> Beautiful music together. <laughs> what is Come the best me. advice your father gave you, Don? <clears throat> what now? What is the best advice your father gave you? Uh, shut up. I ain't no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with that. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. Mine told me to pinch girls on the hind end. (laughs) (laughs) Mine told me the one thing, he told me a lot, but the one thing I remember that he told me is don't trade your woman and youngins for some other man's. That's a good one. And at the time he told me that, I didn't even know what, I said, son, you're crazy. I was about 18 years old. I didn't know what he's talking about. But get, <laughs> getting up to my age now, I completely understand what he meant. Yeah. Don't trade your woman and youngins for some other man's. You get divorced, you get with these other people, you end up, you know, with their youngins, and you're, and, and that's all you're doing. You're, you're swapping your woman and youngins for some other man's. And it makes sense to me now. Yeah, it's true. True, very true. Why did so many leave back in the 40s and go to Michigan? Well, they went to Michigan, Ohio, up north because there wasn't no work here. They went for the jobs. That was post-World War II, and the manufacturing industry was booming. They were begging for workers, and the hillbillies all went up to work to to have a better life and make a better Um. living. World War Two started it, and World War Two started it, and then yeah. but, but mass of, exodus. They they talk about it. Twenty three, uh, the hillbillies went north, and they did that because uh, jobs, economic yeah. economic opportunity. You know, yeah. because there wasn't jobs here. Now, yeah. the coal industry didn't See, come. Yeah. Still ain't no jobs Three here, boys. hardly. Yeah. See, hey. the coal industry didn't come here until the seventies, so they just wasn't nothing here. 52-51, okay. Hornets uh-huh. down by one. Ball game, 52-51. Well, that's why they did it for economic. They wanted a better life. But and, yeah. and, you know, I had a cousin of mine, uh, you know, I just came from there. And he said, you know, when I was in school, and he's up around 60, 65, he said, when I was in school, we were ashamed of being hillbillies. But he said, now it's all turned around and everybody embraces it. They're proud of it, you know. Yeah. Up in Michigan. Hmm. Yeah. And they... Some of these people go and they're still weak and they come back talking like this right here, you know. Or like that, you know? <laughs> Hi, y'all. Or, you know, just like that book I talked about. Don, do you ever think it, about you know? moving up north? I, well, I did, you know. You uh, did move up for a little bit? No, I stayed with my sister and brother up there and uh, they they left as soon as they could, you know. My oldest brother right out of high school and my sister and uh, go get a job, you know. That's how everybody followed their kin up there, you know. And, I didn't like it from the start, but, you yeah. know, get a job anywhere, but it was a different time then, you know, but you, if you didn't like that job, you was working, I had to go across the street and go to work. Hmm. Yeah. There in Michigan? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. It's a, you know, back then, it's the economic hub. Of course, all the auto manufacturing. And it, it, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, it, that's why. And, 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 and but I'll, I'll say this, you know, you notice now a lot of them uh, that are getting older and retiring, they want to come back. They want to come home. Mm. I got a second cousin, a Joey Quarter, that. that never lived here. You know, he was raised up there. Of course, his mother was from here, but he was raised up there, and he just recently got, got to retire. Retire and bought a place in Winchester and came back. Well, outside of Winchester and came back. Anybody yeah. else having trouble with allergies? My nose. Oh, is I'm going to die. Real. Yeah. <laughs> I've been pitiful shape all day. I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spring, spring oh, old old saying, Well, the old sayings is, and then we'll get on our hillbilly words of the day. Hillbilly words of the that. day. One of our old sayings in your nose is running like a sugar fountain, you know, or like a sugar tree. And yeah. what, that, what that's talking about, a certain time of year, a maple tree, you know, that's how they make maple syrup. It's running, saps up, you know. And these other you were you use this for the phrase the saps up, meaning you know that everything gets in a, a family way. You know, I, I, help me here, Don. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, it's springtime in the mountains. Springtime yeah. in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Springtime in the mountains. All right, hillbilly words of the day this week. Uh, Don, you go ahead with yours first. Well, I just heard it today from my friend HF with the plain it's rook. <laughs> And he said, uh, I'd forgot it, but we use it a lot. It's called uh, uh, Plime, P L I M E. That's close, I can spell it. Plime Blank. He said, You played that Plime Blank right. Yep. Plime Blank. Now, Plime Blank. You heard it, John? You ever hear Plime <laughs> I've heard Blank. Plime. Plime Blank. And I hear a lot I've of people say that. It's more like just right. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, just like doing something, you know. You just or somebody say he hit him plum blank in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Just plum yeah, blank. Perfect yeah. shot, you know. Plum, plum blank. Plum so, blank. Mine yeah. is is burnt. Burn it up. You know, you know. And and burnt, of course, is a slang term here. I guess, or you know, for for burn. Burn. But we use it different. We will say, like I say, well, Don's over there playing the guitar, boys. He's burn it up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you'll never hear that anywhere else. And then, of course, the other one I've got is burnt. You know, you'll say, well, you sniff your milk, and I always sniff my milk before I drink it, because I listen, they ain't nothing no worse than drinking clabbered milk. Uh, me and my cousin Hud Allen was talking on that the other night. I don't like clabbered milk. I don't either. Uh -uh. And you're sniffing. If that milk ain't right, it's burnt. Yep. It's burnt. Now, the proper word, I guess, would be ruined. 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 It's but now, ruined. who has got time to say ruined yeah, when you can say ruined, burnt, and ruined. everybody knows what you're talking about. Like, you know, it's they, burnt, they burnt that child. Yeah, they burnt that child. They don't know I nothing. It today. They yeah. don't know nothing. I've, really well, I've got another one that probably just a firm middle fork word because I've never heard it before. It's called uh, uh, Duda. Duda. It's two words, I guess. Duda? Duda. 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 Yeah. 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 What's that mean? Well, uh, that, we used it like in context over there, like... Uh, do the check come today or do the check come tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we raised no, hard over there. Well, I mean, done. when the coal quits, you know, and they took her back her base, you, you know, we favored the relief, you know. <laughs> Had to get a little check. Oh, do the check shoot. come today or do the check come tomorrow? My word is, we say it a lot around here. It's like, instead of saying come over, we'll say come on up. Yeah. yeah, and I never did understand why we said "come on up," but I know I've said it. When you talk about, you know, I use it like this. If I'm talking to somebody, running into somebody, and then you get done talking, you say, "Well, good to see you. Come up, come up." Yeah, you, you know, yeah. I I don't know why, but we do. Why do yeah. we say "come up"? Or you know, and you don't ever say "come, come over." Yeah. yeah, when are you gonna yeah. come over? No, it's when are you gonna come up. Come yeah. up. Come up. It yeah. seems like at the end of every phrase, like I'm bad for it. Like if I'm talking to somebody or I hang up the phone with them, I say, well, come up when you can or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a tradition. Yeah, know. I guess it's just part of it. I don't know, but I do it. Yeah. I, 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 I know I've done it. Had a fella come in here the other day, and he was uh, from Lexington or Louisville. One, he was doing something, something with the restaurant. But anyway, he, he was trying to ask me the address and stuff, and he couldn't understand a word I said. I said <laughs> and he finally, I, I was spelling stuff out for him, you know, and I, I kept telling him Ralton Road, and he kept saying, Walton? Ralton? And I said, no, son, Ralton. Ralton. He said, Walton? And I said, no, Ralton. I said, as in roll. I said, roll? And he said, R U L L? And I said, no, roll. <laughs> R O L. A L T O N, son, Ralton. He, we finally got it lined out, and I told him, he said, I apologize. I said, well, I got a thick accent. I realize it. <laughs> it ain't no big deal. That's kind of like people saying Lew Louisville. It's Louisville. 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 It's Louisville, people. Louisville. It's not Louisville. 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 
Louisville. The proper way to say Louisville is Louisville, not Louisville. I've got a daughter in Louisville, close to Louisville. Louisville. I think she's tuning in. How you doing, Aaron? About to get time for some cakes. We can get them out here, a little bean cake and potato cake. Bean cake and potato cake, yeah. Yeah, and like I said now, guys, for you that don't know, a bean cake is made from leftover soup beans, and a tater cake is made from leftover mashed taters, or you can cook taters down and mash them if you ain't got I mean, some people won't eat soup beans unless they turn gray. Huh? Gray? Yeah, they turn gray. I mean, after you leave them in the fridge walk. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, they thicken up. I I don't know now. Wait, wait, wait. wait. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you ain't eating. Oh, I'll be the sard bean. Yeah, I know I what it is. I ain't talking about sard beans. I'm just saying yeah. they'll turn gray. I'll be the sard bean. I'm oh, here they are, boy. Like show, salt show and pepper. The show the camera. Salt and pepper. So tell we us what these are cake. and what they're made out of so the people out there know if they want to make them. Show them to the camera. And who made them? Margarita made these. Salt, salt and pepper. There you go. Mustard. Uh, potato cakes, bean cakes. Leftover soup beans, a little bit of flour. Uh, I use the egg in mine, bind it all together. Uh, same with potato. It's better if the potatoes are cold. I like a little onion in mine. No, nothing thing. exotic, John. Don't panic. This ain't, this ain't <laughs> like what we've been eating. No, that, this is just a, pretty good. This is more. Yeah, that actually it. looks like something I could eat. This, yeah. is, this is more towards the taking what's left over and making something out of it. Now, I'll tell you something I did run the other day. <laughs> Mom had leftover uh, hamburger dip in the refrigerator. And I was like, I'm going to warm that up. So I went and got me up there. It was in the pot already. So I just got it, put it on the stove. So I went and done something. I think I even, I forgot. I forgot all about it. You're acting like that's pretty good over there. I forgot all about good. it. The tater cakes is real good. I like the bean cakes too, but now the tater cake, this is tater. And this so that's tater and that's bean. I got to have some salt and pepper now. Now, anyway, I started getting on the computer, and I forgot all about that hamburger dip. And mm. I ruined the whole thing. I ruined the, the pot, the hamburger dip, all of it. That ain't got a thing in it. Well, Don, you ain't going to get no salt, though. <laughs> she brings some. Potato cakes and bean cakes. Well, I've not had a bean cake since Ooh. I don't know when. All right. So this is a tater cake. No, you're going to like that. It's really good. There's nothing exotic about that. That's good. The bean cake. I like it, John. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That, that's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I can live on. That's good. What are you laughing about? What's she laughing about? What'd you do? I can live on that right there. That's good eating. Mm. They're laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now sardines. What, ain't what they eat. put in it? They put something in it. And I can't taste it. Good to me. They're gonna give us a, the, the the reveal after we eat it. So this is bean cake. Bean cake made from leftover soup. It's not bad at all. Really good. Whoever made them done a good job. That's good. It's almost like eating like you get cornbread and you just kind of mash it into the soup beans. Mm-hmm. About the same, same thing. Same concept. Same thing. And that's what it is. It's utilizing leftovers. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd eat them both. <laughs> I'd rather have tater cakes than steak. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love them. Bean cakes, potato cakes. Mm-hmm. That's burnt beans. <laughs> no, they make sour beans. I've Mel, had Bo- them. Mel Border says it's up the holler. Mm-hmm. And I've heard people say, come down, too. Mm-hmm. Come down. Well, me and my young and have this debate. We'll be going to Michigan. She'll say, uh, when are we going to go back down there, Dad? And I'll say, you're going down, you're going up. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. No, you're going north, Don. That's this up. Is, this is up the holler eating. I'll say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. How do you get down the holler eating? Hmm? How do you get down the holler eating? The further down the holler you go, the better the food is. <laughs> like, you know, you get higher in the hog. The <laughs> closer you get to town back in the day, the better the food because they had more money. Mm-hmm. Looks like Mom has tuned in from Florida, John Sayer. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. We're sure we're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying this food. <laughs> uh, guys, if you'd like us to try something, mm-hmm. just give us a comment. Mm. We'll sure try it. We are uh, probably not going to stay on as long as normal tonight because of the ball game. But uh, if you'd like us to try food, we'll sure try it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anything you want us to talk about? We need, on, we we need to, some more challenges. We try to pick from uh, sure, topics that are given to us. 
I might eat one more of them tater cakes, right? Yeah. Now. Yuck! Sorry, Melinda Perkins. <laughs> yeah, Somebody don't game, like this. The ball game be over in a minute. I'm about to have a major cardiac episode watching this ball game. <laughs> Rachel Sizemore said, uh, "Ball game be over shortly, I guess. I, I don't know. Somebody wanting the score on there? Can you pull it up, John? Mm-hmm. We'll get you the score. We got uh, my man from Tech Collar, and he can do anything. He actually does some streaming for D and D Sports sometimes too. So. Yep, contract for him. Here we go. Oh, we're up by six. 240 to go, up by six. 240 to go, up by six, guys. McGoffin County. Let's see. See if I can do a little trick here. We'll, we'll watch the rest of this game together. If I can get this thing to do what I want to. Turn we want to do this for these kids work extremely hard. Uh, they come in here. Uh, they come in here the other morning, ate breakfast, the whole team, and they were just wonderful young men. We want to brag on them. Who said try to bake possum? A complete gentleman. John Brown. Uh, there's, looks like there's two minutes and 21 seconds left. We're up by six. Man, that's not what I'm going to do. And we've got the ball. Guys, every episode won't be like this, but like I said, our local team here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to... Uh... Our local team here is competing up in the regional championship, and we want to shout out and show our support for them. Absolutely. What else we got here? Oh, we got all kinds of stuff here. What do you want to talk on? Yeah, you got some. Uh, I don't know. We need to talk on something. Well, we talk on the deer population around here. I know back you're an old school deer hunter. Well, back when you were deer hunting, they wouldn't mean many deer here. No, to we town, went to Michigan to hunt deer, you know, maybe down Cave Run you'd see one. It's like seeing a bear now, you yeah. know, if you've seen a deer. It's a big deal. Good story on that with a bear, you know. Well, I'll tell you the first one on a coyote. Back in the 90s, my uncle went to Isle, and he's gone now, but we were rabbit hunting, and we'd never seen a coyote in these parts. There wasn't no such thing back in the day. Mm -hmm. So these dogs go in this thicket, and they come out of running, and Wendell said, oh, son, he said, they're one of a German police dog. He said, they're yeah. running a German police dog. And my Uncle Doug said, son, that ain't no German police dog. He said, well, it's a wolf then. He said, I ain't never seen nothing like that. <laughs> but come to find out, it was a coyote, and that's the first one we'd ever well, encountered. Well, we've seen coyotes, you know, on Old Western. That's oh, yeah, they have, yeah. <laughs> At West, where we've seen them, you know, but... The deer hunting. The deer kills more people than any other animal. I hate deer. In the state. I'm new. They, they, I saw a cool documentary the other they, day. I watch a lot of documentaries. And I saw Audie Murphy. You remember Audie Murphy? Yeah. He was the most decorated United States soldier in World War II. Yeah. Fake I mean, news, he was uh, like, he was decorated beyond. What, a Medal of Honor winner. Uh, won every kind of award. But he, he the, the documentary said that it had haunted him for the rest of his life, you know. We probably, his military service, yeah. he struggled with it. He, uh, he faked his age. He was like 16 or 17 years faked old. Faked his age to get into the military. Volunteered, yeah. Yep. And a great act, great West, I thought. In great act. Western, you know. Guys, we're doing this a little different tonight to give a shout out to our local basketball team here. Like I said, we want to give them a little air time with us too because these kids work really hard. They came in here Saturday morning, all had breakfast, and they were just wonderful young men. And, and uh, give a shout out to them. If you've not watched them play yet, if they win tonight, which looks like they're more than likely going to, is that safe to say, John? All right, it looks like it, but you never know these ball games. Uh, there's a minute 28 left, and they're up by 6.68.62. They play Saturday night at 8.45 up at the Expo Center. So uh, if you've not got to watch them live, they, they put on a great show, and they're a great bunch of kids. You need to support them. Uh, we've also got our giveaway. Speaking of that, we need to give away the sweatshirt. There you go. So we'll get her to do the wheel in there and pick us a winner. You show them the sweatshirt, the hoodie? Yep, I'm going to... Uh, well, there we go. We got it on screen here, too, guys. Sorry, it took me a minute. I've been trying to concentrate and get that. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's been a good show. I think we've been kind of kicking back things again. But uh, hopefully we're going to get some more guests. Is If there's anybody that'd like to come on and... Uh, you know, yeah, just come on. We, we well, like I'm, we're dying to do an interview, and uh, we do have a big interview coming up hopefully this summer with, uh, I guess we can go ahead and now. I ain't locked it in yet, but Ryan Lemon from Kentucky Sports Radio. He said he was down to the farmhouse, and he's wanting to do one. Mm -hmm. Phil Robertson. 
If you're out there, I want you to sit down to interview with me. We got a lot in common, son. I can't eat shellfish. I'm allergic, but anything else, you know, I know you eat them crawdads and this and that, but anything else, we got a lot in common. Come on, do an interview with us. We'd love to have you. Uh, we'll fly you up here, and uh, well, we can't good. afford to fly you up here. We have to drive. <laughs> we have to borrow somebody's car and drive down and get you. Yeah, we'll have to. <laughs> Maybe get somebody. <laughs> you like riding on a bus? <laughs> Greyhound bus. So whoever's got a new car around here, we'll borrow a car and come down and get you. Yeah. But well, I can't drive them tonight. I think that, uh, you know, I watched that show, Duck Dice, and I think them people's got a lot in common with us down there. I do too. I, yeah. I, I, when somebody tries to ask me what our show's about, I'm kind of like, it's Duck Dynasty a little bit. Hey, well, they got a lot in common with us. Now, like I said, we ain't got no alligators and no, no, uh, no, no. but they do have a lot in common with us. And I never hunted a duck in my life. Uh, uh, I remember when I seen the first duck fly over. But yeah, I, I always feel like our show's kind of like that, a little bit of KSR, and you know, we're just we're all local place, country. And boys. That's what people want. You know what I mean? We talk a lot about Appalachia. We always have something good to eat. Here's the sweatshirt, and we have a winner, and it is Mary oh, we got a winner. Brown. Murray Ralph. Murray Ralph. All right. Congratulations, Murray Ralph. Logo printed on the inside of that sale hoodie. And Murray Ralph, you can pick that up up here at the farmhouse. Come up and see it. Top engager. We picked her because she was the top engager this week. Clara, how about some coffee? Whatever that means, you know, top engager. Clara. I guess that means that they uh they engage the most. They like comments. They Not share no comments whatsoever. I'm trying to get the comments here too because if I put it over here, it'll <laughs> it'll take away from the game. Out, like I said, and uh, want to give a shout out to my buddy Buck Arnix. He dropped me off some deer sausage uh, yesterday, and I like deer sausage, so I'm pumped about that. Yeah. Uh, Guys, I think it's safe to say this game's probably over, short of a miracle. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, I mean, eight seconds got got. Looks like both team has two timeouts. Uh, yeah, but these guys, these D and D are doing a great job down there at the regionals. They've got two cameras underneath the basketball goal. It's like what to see. You see that switch there? That's another camera right underneath the basketball goal when they're shooting free throws. Yeah, if we go up here about ten guys, we'll switch off because that's probably it. With fifty some seconds left. If we go up by 10, it's uh -oh. over. If we go up by 9, it's over. Uh, yeah, guys, if you can like and share this out, it'd be great. Be sure to check out the website, www.appalachianconnection.com. You can find all of our links there. We're going to be on Spotify and everything else, too, like I said. Uh, if you want to merchandise as far as out of state, just you can Facebook pay, I guess, and then have it shipped up, whatever. Uh, you'd have to get up with Amanda with that because I don't know how to work none of that, or John. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Anything we can do to help you out there, let us know. Give us some content. We're picking off topics that people have seen us. I think we're doing pretty good. We're getting back in the swing of things. Uh, our reels are out there everywhere. Oh, on TikTok, reels, YouTube, we're on everything. Our sponsors are great. We're so thankful for them. Oh, uh, yeah. Music back tomorrow, live at 630, 630-ish. John's got a prior I got, engagement. I, I got to I gotta get my son signed up for Little League. I Maybe don't know why. Seven. They, Maybe seven-ish. But, we'll, hey, but anyway. we'll be here. I'll be here. We'll be here. And like I said, all Go ahead and start tomorrow, coming on down. we're going to give 10% to help this young lady out to get her back on her feet. Uh, uh, if we band together and help each other. And as always... About. We don't do politics on this podcast, and, and we just uh, we, we want to engage people and bring people together, not tear them apart. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, everybody's got their own political views, and at the end of the day, I mean, it's 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 their own thing. I got to visit with my cousin Toomey for a little bit while I was up our Did custom you? man. Have you made him yeah. famous yet? He, he He's famous already. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a legend in his own mind is he liking, already. Is he liking the... Oh, he loves it. Yeah, he's coming down actually in a couple of weeks with his Cousin band. David, he does our uh, intro uh, <laughs> instrumental. He's a professional mandolin he, player. Yeah, and everything else. You and know, they're going to come down. I think in a couple of weeks and play. I think they're that'd be play. good on Friday night. Bring his band. I used he used to have one named Bosco or Roscoe. Well, I can't remember when his band was. It Bosco or. Bosco or Roscoe. I can't remember yeah. which one, but he uh, told me his real name's David, but we call him Toomer because, Lord have mercy, he, you just have to know him, you know. <laughs> I love him, though. Uh, 
Hey, well, this R. is a ball game, old uh, Uncle hey, R.D. McDaniel came down a couple weeks ago and played with us. He's uh, coming back the 23rd. He's I don't coming know, back he, to play. I don't think that'd be Friday. But Anybody's welcome to come and play. Whatever Anybody. week that is, yeah, Anybody. we need help. Been, I invited a few people. I was like, you come down and play. Anybody's you know, welcome. Come on down and play. play. You know, we'll, I said, I'll we'll shout you out. out. Well, yeah. I said, we'll shout you out all night long if you're wanting to, you know, if you play music and you want to have some of a music career, you got to start somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this ball game's over, so we... Our well, last topic. I don't know. They I keep hitting these little uh, two pointers. People want to hear about Appalachian haints. Haints. Haint. Oh yeah. And you know what a hain is? Of course, a hain is a, is a haunt. You know, I guess the proper word for it. And what our personal experiences is. Well, I've, I spent a lot of time in the woods, and I've seen some things that really made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. My papa Henry always told me, and everybody that lived over that way, Don's probably heard it too. There's a place over there. It crosses from the head of Paddle over into Arnett's Creek, and it's called the Paddle Gap. And there's a place called Hog Trough. Yeah. And he said when you would ride a horse through Hog Trough, somebody would jump on the back of you off that high wall and hang on. Yeah. And they'd ride so far away you that they'd let go and jump off. He said they never did bother you, but said he'd petrify you. He said people scared to death go through hog trough. Heard that all my life. I was, I was raised right in the head of paddle, you know. Well, I knew that, and I don't know. See, he, now, see, that's the thing about him. See, he was, when he was a boy, he was raised in Head Lake Branch. Yeah. So well, I guess it would have crossed right over there together. Just like you know? that, you know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, but uh, he was raised in Lake Branch. My mm-hmm. papa Henry came into here in the 1930s and lived in a rock cliff. That's where he grew up. But these haints, you know, are ghosts. Are they ghosts? Are they spirits? Do they? <laughs> I never heard of them bothering anybody. Well, I don't know. Like, I have never no heard idea. anybody. I, I don't think so. I, I really I don't, don't know. know what they are. I don't know. I, I, I think they're real though, because people I know that wouldn't you know, lie or something. It's, you know, they've seen ghosts all over for a middle fork. You know, like down there, a soldier down there at the cemetery at, as you turn up punching. Yeah. Everybody's seen that guy, you know, whatever it is. I, I squirrel hunting with my first cousin off on a point, and we'd walk down. We was being real quiet because the squirrels was a cut, and we was going to get us some mess, you know. And another word for the mess. mess. Yeah, mess. Yeah. We'll get us some mess of squirrels, and <clears throat> we started hearing people talking. He said, son, you hear that? I said, yeah. That's pro-. I said, who is that? I said, it must be a bunch over there hunting, you know, and it's like, it said right, left, boom. Then we hear a gunshot. He said, "You were hearing that, but it, but it was odd because it wasn't a clear sound. It's like it come on the wind when the leaves would rustle, you know." And I said, "Yeah, I hear it." I said, "I'm going over to see what it is." So we go over there, and the closer we get, the more distant the sound would get. Boom! Right, left, center, boom. So I don't know what we was hearing. We never did find nobody, but it was something mysterious. Yeah. Huh. He said, "Let's get out of here and never come back." I said, "Sound like a plan to me." <laughs> Well, I mean, in the hills, they've always been, you know, that's a big deal. People afraid to get out, you know, and yeah, yeah. everybody's always hearing stuff. I don't know. Yeah. You know, know and that, that's another topic, too, we was talking about, Don. Like, all our lives, my life and your life, we've heard the old-timers talk about black painters. Black painter. Well, we know there were mountain lions here. Pumas, mountain lions, cougars, whatever you want to call them. They were here. They went extinct from here, supposedly. In about 1910. But they were here. They were here. We know that. But we scientists will tell you that there's no way that they could have been black. So what were these old people talking about when they said a black painter? I hear the painter's black ball. painter. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know. It Mom. had to have been a mountain lion, but was it some kind of distinct like population native to here or native to Appalachia that I think had so. mutated? You know? Well, just like, you know, you got black squirrels and Maybe they're black cats, you know. Black squirrels, black cats, black I rabbits. don't think my mom would have lied about it. She said she's seen them, you know. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. where did they come from and where did they go, you know? Where did you come from? Where did you go? I've seen where a black painter in a Cotton barn up Joe. punching. <laughs> Rachel Sassamore says she's seen a black painter up in a barn up punching. There you go. I oh, see, that's what I'm saying. Is I it mean, a pet? What is it? Is it a cat? Big a cat? A black p- painter is the Appalachian term for a panther. Panther. Okay. <laughs> that, that is a mountain lion or a mountain cougar lion. or a puma or a cat. But see, they ain't supposed to be black. But, that, that's but they say they can't be black. But now listen, I killed a black rabbit one time in the wild. Mm-hmm. So I know they can be. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what people. But people were seeing something. These old people didn't make it up. You know? And McGough mm-hmm. County just got the win. So there we go. Guys, the Hornets have won, and I guess with that, we'll air off for the night, Joe. 
Is that it? Is that I it think for that's about our, uh, episode We're seven? Up on eight o'clock. <laughs> Unless you all got something out there you want us to talk on. <laughs> Take us out of here and take us out in fashion. I mean, me and Don likes to go in fashion. Yeah, in like fashion. Yeah. <laughs> well, this thing's way behind. <laughs> uh, Restream's not keeping up with you us. Guys, share this Appreciate like this. Guys, we, Be we sure. You know, yeah. uh, we're back. Uh, we'll have more content next <laughs> week. Look, this week a little bit different because the ball game and everything yeah. going on, but we will be back. We ain't done. We're not done. I this like is to fun. I love possum. it. Possum? Yes, I'd like to eat you want to I've never possum. eat snake either. Can we do snake? Well. Go ahead. Yeah. No? You ain't going to eat a snake? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I'll take one for the team, but I don't want to. Are you wanting to eat like a possum picked up on the side of the road, or you want to kill a I don't a fresh care possum? if it's roadkill, what it is. It don't matter to me if it's fresh, you know. And how are you going to cook it? Well, I'll leave that up to somebody else. I said somebody. <laughs> well, I don't even know nobody know how to cook a possum. Well, I could cook it, you know. All right. My brother, Harold, he'll fix it. Harold fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I've ate rattlesnake. Well, here's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I don't know if there's a season on possum, but if the, if it's in season, I'll get you a possum, if it's I, in season. I feel like I'd rather eat snake than a possum. Really? I don't know. What I kind just, of snake you want to eat? I don't know. I, I've just always heard. Rattler, copperhead, black snake. Ooh, black snake would be nasty, wouldn't it? <laughs> nasty. I don't like snake. I don't like to talk to that. I don't either. What about some Creek Manor? Creek Manor? Fried Manors? Creek Manor. Well, they ain't well, too bad. I, I'd say sardines are worse. Uh, they ain't nothing no worse than them sardines. <laughs> no. Guys, thank you. We appreciate you all. Tune in, like, share, comment, and like I said, we'll be back next Thursday. Peace, Join us tomorrow everybody. for music. God bless you. Peace. God bless you all. Love you. We yep. love having you. Be sure to subscribe everywhere. We're on Facebook, Apple Lesson Connection Podcast, YouTube, Spotify, you name it, we're on there. TikTok. Just look for Appalachian Connection. www.appalachianconnection.com. Check out the farmhouse. Come, Come and sit around. Yeah, we we'll, we'll put you on there. Yeah, we'll put you on there. If you and, got something uh, to say, if you ain't got nothing to say, we we'll do put wanna, you on there and let you get your picture on there. Come Absolutely. on down to, down here if you want to be on the podcast or get in the group and let us know if you want to be interviewed or if you if you would like for a guest to come on here, maybe we can reach out and get them on here. Right. That's what I, I want to do. So Yeah, absolutely. We're in. Yeah. All the way. We'll leave the light on the kitchen for you. All the way. We'll see you guys next time.